Let's go to Liz in Oceanside, California. What's up, Liz? Hey, John. How are you? So good. How about you? <laughs> Doing great. Good. I just, uh, I was just wanted to get your feedback about, well, I'm a stay-at-home mom. I have two kids. One's two and one's eight months old. Oh, gosh. Can I just make the, I don't know, some... Special sign for you. <laughs> Is it a? How, how are we doing? Are you doing all right? <laughs> yeah, I uh, currently I got like four hours of sleep last night. I think it's a conspiracy between uh, my husband and my two kids. But um, you know, <laughs> hey, other than that. when's the last time? I, I just asked the last caller this. When's the last time you just casually got up from wherever you were and just went to the bathroom by yourself? <laughs> Surprisingly, that's going okay still. I, I think my <laughs> two-year-old. <laughs> I think my two-year-old is an independent player enough that um, I can actually get away with that sometimes. But we'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. All right. It's the little things. It's the little. I remember the it first is. time this is, this is me just being I'm half ashamed and vulnerable. My, uh, my kids were gone. And I mean, my wife was gone. And my son was like one. And I had to go to the bathroom. And I remember getting up to go and then stopping and just looking, being like, Oh, he wasn't one. He was just a few months old. And I was, oh, I guess you're, I guess, I guess you're coming in. I guess you're just going to stare at me. Right. And yeah, I, that's like <laughs> seared into my soul. Every time I see him, even though he's like 11 now, I think, do you remember that? It was super weird. <laughs> anyway, yeah. that's cool. All right. So what's up, Liz? Sorry. Yeah, no, you're fine. Um, yeah. I just wanted to get your feedback about um, how to use my iPhone around my kids in a way that is positive for our relationship and for their development. And I just feel a little lost on this issue because it really wasn't something that my parents had a chance to model for me because it wasn't an issue. It didn't exist. Yeah. Hey, what an awesome yeah. question. Especially what an awesome question for with young kids. Like, let's plan what this thing's going to look like downstream. That's so great. Good for you. Um, all right. So here, I, here's the thing. We don't have a ton. Uh, it may exist. I haven't seen it. I don't. I haven't seen a ton of hard research on this. It's so still so new. What we're going to find out twenty years from now or fifteen years from now um, is what happened. We're playing a giant social experiment where we right. handed every parent in the world a giant distraction and then said, "Go raise kids, and we'll see what happens." Exactly. That scares me to death. <laughs> me too. I will tell you that um, when I think back over the last decade. I literally can melt my own heart with how I've handled this. I've not done it well. And it's only been in the last couple of years that I've even gotten hyper intentional about it. And then the last year or two, since I've been telling everybody about it every day, that I've gotten pathological about it. So here's a couple of my rules. And if you can, this is just for me. These aren't rules for everybody else. Everybody's life is different. And I'll also say when I was on call 24-7, 365, there was a reality to that. I had to have my phone around because I may have to sure. go to a hospital and I don't have that anymore. So I, I know that there's, everybody's different. So here's a couple of, of big rules. If I'm on my phone communicating, if I'm texting somebody, if I'm trying to answer an email real quick and I'm just in passing and one of my kids comes in, I call it out. So I say loudly, Hey, let me finish this. I'm sending a message. If it's appropriate, I tell them who I'm sending a work message I'm sending a message to one of my friends. I'm sending a message to your mom. Hang on. And what I'm doing when that happens is I'm acknowledging a human just walked into the room. And mm -hmm. it, more importantly, it's one of the most important humans on planet Earth to me. I'm not ignoring you. One of the right. biggest challenges for kids is they want to be seen. They have to be seen. That's a part of their physiology, part of their biology, right? And so they walk into a room and they feel like a ghost. They will begin doing things to be seen. And so I want to make sure I see you and I need to finish this thing because they may not be the most important thing in my moment, right? In that, in that second, but they are the most important person. So the second thing is whenever possible, I do not have that box in my hand when my kids are in, the pre in my presence. That's just become a thing for me. I watch them toggle between my eyes and the phone and my eyes and the phone and my eyes and the phone. And I don't like that. There's, yeah, exactly. I, I, don't, I don't have a double blind study, but there's something not natural about that. They are checking in real time, who am I looking at? What's important to dad? 
and they have to know they're important. Um, I do, if I have to, I got to send a couple of emails. I got to respond to this text messages. My friend's having a challenge. I got to get in the middle of it. I do, I'll go in my room and shut the door. And then that way I can be fully present with this phone and I can put the phone down and then I can go back out. I'll also say, I fail at this regularly, Liz. I kind of mm-hmm, suck at sure. it. And it's, I, I get frustrated with myself. Like I'll think to myself, my kid's right out there playing and I'm here scrolling on some stupid thing. Mm. So um, I, I have to remind myself to put this thing down. It is, it's a drug for me and um, I've got to be careful about it. The other thing is, I think it's important not to demonize the phone. I think the thing we need to be, it, it's just a tool. It's just, right. it's a hammer, it's a screwdriver. So um, I quit talking bad about it. I, I used to tell my son, you know, there's that old Homer Simpson quote that I love, which is the best part about having kids is to teach them to hate the things that you hate. That was funny <laughs> until the last four or five years and it just hasn't been so funny anymore. Um, but I don't want them to think the phone is evil. It's just a, it's a tool. I want them to watch self-control and watch where my attention is. And so um, if it's out, it's yeah, out. If it's I not, say, it's not. You know what I mean? Right. That's what I say every time. I don't let my my son, uh, my, my son is my two year old. I don't mm-hmm. ever let him just hold my phone or play with my there, phone. I, yes. And so I, um, I always tell him if he gets it, like, Hey, mommy's phone is not a, it's not a toy. It's a tool. Yes. And so, and it's uh, for adults. I, it's for adults. Right. <laughs> and so as we get older, like I'll tell my kids, Hey, that that's an adult movie. This is, you know, I got to watch the new Chappelle special. This is an, this is an adult show. This is not for kids. And this is adult talk time. This is when me and your mom are talking. Y'all go play. Um, my kids understand that language, that adults have conversations that are not for them, that they're not included in. And so this goes into that bucket. Um, this is an adult tool. Same as when we're hunting and I've got gun, like those, I handle those, right? And so it just becomes one of those things. It's, it's just something to be aware of. Um, what are you worried about when it comes to how you handle this stuff? Yeah, I'm just uh, really worried about messing this up. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I have that same gut instinct I, that I, that's been creeping up more and more um, as my two-year-old especially is getting, you know, more, more and more aware. Um, I'm afraid that he is going to feel um, like I'm not present, like I'm even your show has been a problem, John. I've had to turn off your show and be, <laughs> cause I can tell there's like a podcast running in the background. Even if I'm just not holding my phone, mm-hmm. he knows that my mental space is somewhere else. Yes. So I've had to limit like, okay, maybe I should just listen to one, one podcast in the morning or, or not at all. And what saves till his nap time or something, but I'm going to stop you right there. This show is way more important than any kid. You, I don't know what, Way more important than your children, Liz. Um, Okay, so you know what you're describing? I've never heard it described this way, but you just did it perfectly. Let's say you have a parent with an alcohol addiction or an opioid addiction, and they're sitting on the couch, and a kid sees them, hears them, and can touch them. But a kid can feel they are in another place. Right, or and it becomes like a numbing mechanism almost. That, I think. It, it exactly, and the kids will solve for. They will try to make that leap to that connection with their parent for the rest of their life. And if you're holding a phone, it's the same. They see you, they hear you, they can touch your leg, but you're gone. You're not there. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, you, your instinct is so right. I think the cool thing we can all do, we can all work on this, is coming up with some practices. Do, does the phone go in the drawer? Are there times when I'm going to check my phone? And this is hard for a stay-at-home mom because right. now you're talking about disconnecting yourself from the rest of the world, right? Right, and it's, it's lonely. Uh, it's true. Yeah, it's it can be like I just found myself listening to podcasts a ton because I love learning and I love growing in knowledge and how to be a good parent. <laughs> And and all these good things, and there's so many good things to listen to. But can I can I, I tell just, you can I tell you the one insidious thing? Yeah. Here's the one insidious thing. It's learning and growing is cool, but w- podcast voices, of which I am one, bypasses all of your other senses. So up until 75 years ago, if you were communicating with somebody, you saw them; they're in your presence. 
They might even be on a stage far away, but they were with you. And just 75 years ago when we came up with the radio, or maybe it was 100 years ago, I don't remember. We started bypassing that, and our brains are dealing with something that they are not designed to deal with, which is somebody's voice piped directly into their into your brain. And why am I telling you this? It is cool to learn. It is cool to get connected. It's cool to figure things out. It's cool to learn new tools and things. But you're also getting a cheap substitute for connection. There's right. parts of your brain and body that you and I are friends and we've never even met, right? Um, Absolutely. There are yeah. times I found myself in the past reaching out to a podcast just because I missed a voice. You know what I mean? I missed the inside jokes. And I should be having those with real people, which is hard for a mom who's staying at home with two little ones, two, two years and younger. And so here's, the, here's what I want you to focus on. Focus on where and when am I fully present. If I'm going to be on the phone with my friends, I want to be fully on the phone with my friends. Totally in. If I'm going to respond to texts and emails and get the hilarious memes and ask the questions about like, what does this rash look like? I, I want to be fully in that conversation. And when I'm not fully there, I want to be fully with my kids. And if I'm not fully with my kids, I want to be fully in the book or in the podcast I'm listening to. Not doing 10 things at once because... You know, we all know now that um, that toggling back and forth, multitasking is a myth. It's not real. It's just your brain going back and 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 back, back and forth. And so where can Which I be so fully good at present? <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes. So I think maybe let's do this. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this out loud with you because I'm a parent who struggles with this too. Maybe instead of wondering – what we do with a phone, which is real. I'm not going to give my kids phones. Even my middle schoolers come back and said, man, I really thank you. Um, I'm not going to give my kids phones. I, I, that's all simple. I'm going to continue to work on being connected with my kid, making sure they see that I see them. But beneath that, let's forget the phone. When I'm where I'm at, I want to be fully present wherever I'm at. When I'm, when I, as soon as I get on a plane to go speak somewhere, I'm going to be fully there. Because missing, like, oh, I just miss my kids. That, that, that doesn't help me see them. That doesn't help me honor the people I'm going to speak to. It just makes me feel bleh. So I'm going to be all in. I'm going to be, when I go to New City, I'm going to enjoy myself there. I'm going to enjoy it. And then when I'm back at home, I'm going to be fully at home. Does that make sense? Yep. When I'm talking to my friends, let's be there. So you give me, I'm going to let you turn the tables. You give me a practice that I'm going to agree to do. When it comes to <laughs> having two little kids in the house and phones. You tell me and I'll be all in. Okay, let's see. Well, I thought of this a couple of days ago. I was thinking maybe if I kept my drawer, uh, kept my phone in my bedroom drawer and turned it all the way up so I can hear it. If you know something, if my husband calls or something, I, need, I really need to get it. Um, but just sort of keeping it in there and not having it readily accessible around me just for the morning until until nap time. So what, what time is nap time? Nap time is a one. It's at one after lunch. Whew, okay. If you can make it till noon, man, that's some willpower. You're not even I don't a real know. addict. It's just an idea. <laughs> All right. So here, here's the deal. Here's here's the thing. I'm in. I'm in. So I'm going to. I've got my social media on my work phone, so it's on one other thing. My commitment for the next thirty days is that phone does not leave my truck. When I get home, it stays in the car, and then I will see it again the next day. And so I won't mess with it in the morning. That's my commitment for 30 days. Cool? Cool. Second thing is my phone will go in a drawer. And that's so dumb for me. My self-service doesn't even work. That's such a moron that I carry it around. My <laughs> phone is going to go in a drawer. And I will check it at intervals throughout the afternoon or evening. And um, I will not pick it up, uh, check it before I go to work. That way I can be fully present with myself, fully present with my morning routine, with my spiritual stuff, and with my family. I'm in. You in? I'm in. Okay. Promise me that you will not go off on an island, though. You need other people. That means you may have to invite people over. Yeah. Okay? You may have to be weird and invite friends over. I don't know if that's legal no, in I, California. I love, but you got to invite. I love hosting. Yeah. Good. So set up a couple of mornings a week. Tell someone to bring their weird little kid over, and y'all can just stare at each other. No cleaning up, no makeup, no nothing. You bring whatever coffee you got left, and I'll... I got a banana and a half left and let's just hang out. Is that cool? Yeah, that sounds good. Oh my gosh, Liz, we are changing the world. Good Liz. Oh my, you just made me happy. All right, challenge accepted to everyone listening. Phones in the drawer. No social media before work. 
Let's try that for 30 days and see what happens. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to sleep better. Your life's going to be better. You're going to have better sex with your spouse. Your kids are going to like you and all that kind of stuff. But let's pretend we don't know what's going to happen and let's go from there.